Hello, I'm Dr. Kurt Dietrich, Superintendent of the North Penn School District. I'm here today with Bob Schock, our Director of Business Administration. Today we'll be providing an overview of our school district's financial planning and budget process. As you know, the economy is providing a significant challenge to all school districts and all municipalities and each and every one of us across this entire country. During this difficult time, it's important that we work together to be able to meet the challenges of the economic times and to work together to be able to balance budgets, to be able to provide the high quality of education that the students in the North Penn School Districts deserve and have always gotten. It's more important than ever now that we find ways to be able to work together to meet these challenges. And as we work through this whole budget overview, we want to encourage all of those in the community to work with us to solve the budget challenges. You can continue to tune into a series of budget presentations and of course check our website for additional updates. So this time I'd like to turn it over to Bob Schock and he'll walk us through a presentation regarding our new fiscal reality. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, all districts in Pennsylvania are being affected by the prolonged recession, but districts that are heavily dependent on local revenue have an even greater impact. Uh, North Penn is one of those districts. Most of our revenue comes from the real estate tax, and before recession, just natural growth of the tax base would result in increased revenue without an increase to the tax rate. But during the recession, we've seen virtually no growth. At the same time, we've seen a greatly increased number of assessment appeals that are eroding the tax base. The earned income tax, which comprises 6% of our total revenue, had been increasing at 3 to 5% a year, and that has not increased for the past three years. We receive revenue from the realty transfer tax each time a property is sold, but uh, property sales have declined dramatically, so we're only receiving about 35% of the normal level. Interest earnings, just a few years ago, interest rates were 4%, resulting in revenues of about $4 million, and now we're receiving less than half a percent and revenues of less than $1 million. This chart indicates the history of these four local revenues uh, over an eight-year period. It shows that during that period, the revenues were steadily increasing, largely with the growth of the earned income tax. Uh, and if they had increased, we would be receiving somewhere between 10 and 12 percent more than we're receiving now. We're actually receiving four to five million below levels received just a few years ago. And this just comprises a minor part of our revenues, but it shows the impact of our reliance on the local revenue sources. As indicated, most of our revenue comes from the local sources. We have about 40 sources in total. Uh, about 17 percent is from the state and about 3 percent is from the federal government. Of those local sources, though, the bulk of it, almost 90 percent, is from the property tax and the largest additional portion, about 8 percent, is from the earned income tax. On the expenditure side, we have several known increases, but we're attempting to quantify those, and they're dependent on state and federal government decisions. For example, the Pennsylvania State Employees Retirement System has experienced market losses to the value of their portfolio during the uh, economic downturn, and that will result in increases to the employer share uh, based on some amount to be yet determined by the legislature. Federal health care reform brings new uh, insureds onto our roles and we're attempting to quantify the impact of that at this point as the regulations evolve. So in summary, the prolonged recession impacts all of these revenue sources. State and local revenues are down with little in hope for a full rebound to prior levels. State revenues are also down and there's little political will to raise taxes. We have been bolstered by the federal stimulus program in recent years, but there does not seem to be a political will to continue that into the future, so we need to plan for losses in that area as well. Since 2006, we've had a law in Pennsylvania that limits the school board's ability to raise taxes without voter approval. The average increase allowed prior to the recession was about 3.5%. Uh, last year it was 2.9%, but 2.9% increases to the property tax rate only allowed us to increase the expenditures by 7 tenths of 1%. In 2011-12, the index just released last month will allow us to increase taxes 1.4% without voter approval, and in the future 
we'll be lucky to have a number as high as 1.4 percent as we work to balance the budget. In North Penn we have some specific factors. One of them is that maintaining competitive compensation adds about four million to our budget annually. Our health care costs have been increasing at double digit amounts. Some of the options we used to balance the budget with last year's 2.9 percent increase were one-time items, major savings initiatives, or use of balances that once used are no longer available for balancing the budget in the following year. So the combined impact of all of this is that we expect it to be about four to six million more difficult to balance the budget this year than before. This slide indicates the reasons for that. It's the Act 1 index. Uh, normally it would have given us almost five million, this year less than two million, and that two million dollar amount is declining as we receive on a weekly basis news of more assessment appeals. This slide indicates the reasons for that and we, as we track that week by week we're losing value from our ability to raise taxes. This line chart shows that the Act 1 index is comprised of both the state and the national wage rate indice and therefore it is declining about three years after the onset of the recession. Therefore, even when the economy rebounds, we can expect a lagging rate and a low rate to impact our ability to balance the budget. At this point, we are projecting the financial future based on both expenditure and revenue assumptions and assumptions about that Act 1 index. We use a sophisticated budget planning model, and in using that, we are concluding that the amount needed to balance the budget will range between 8 to 10 million based on the best and worst case assumption. Each year balancing that requires new ideas and new strategies. On the revenue side you can see in this slide the assumptions on best and worst case scenarios in each of the major local revenue sources. On the expenditure side our budget is comprised primarily of salaries and benefits and we have to make assumptions on each of those as shown on this slide. In addition, we've benefited in recent years from declining energy costs as a weak economy has allowed those costs, costs to decline. But a rebounding economy will probably increase those costs to prior levels. We have some major expenditure challenges uh, because certain items increase beyond the Act 1 index, including health care costs, the retirement, and energy. And it's good to remember that any of the increases above the Act 1 index in these areas will require us to make an offsetting reduction in expenditures or find a new revenue source to provide that income to provide for that expenditure increase. So we're going to forecast the financial future, generate as many options as we can to balance the budget, estimate the financial potential of each of those revenue increases or expenditure reductions, and then we're going to go through a process of selecting and implementing the best options. To do this, we're proposing to use systematic benchmarking studies in several areas. A benchmarking study allows you to look at your organization, its processes and procedures, and compare it with best-in-class organizations elsewhere in schools or other sectors of the economy. We have about a, 10 of these, maybe more, to look at. Some of them increase revenues. One of them is a, a Medicaid source that in Pennsylvania is called the Access Program. It's revenue for health-related services for special education students. We think there's potential there. User fees comprise everything from what is charged to outside groups as they rent our facilities to what students pay to take certain courses and participate in certain activities. We're looking at ways to control the rate of increase in certain of these difficult expenditure items, and in some areas we believe there is a cost reduction potential. Each of those requires a major study to have a realistic idea of what the potential is and the challenges of implementing that and creating a realistic schedule.